Hey guys, good morning. We're talking about what it means to keep the faith. The Apostle Paul said this is one of the big three. Keep the faith, run the race, fight the good fight, keeping the faith. So far we've said you can't keep what you don't have. It begins with a choice. Make the right choices. Lots of options out there. Just make for yourself a decent choice and then keep it. And then we spoke about the fact that faith is, uh, is not an all or nothing thing. It's an all or something thing. That something may just be a little grain of mustard seed. Let me move on today. Jesus one day in Matthew chapter 8 verse 5 is uh, confronting an incredibly interesting situation. But first of all, in Luke chapter 18, verse 8, he, he, he throws out a question to people after a great demonstration and a great um, interaction with a woman about the issue of faith. He asks this question. He says, I wonder if I'll find faith in the earth when I come back again. I wonder if I'm going to find faith on the earth. And then in reference to that, that passage in Matthew chapter 8, Jesus found faith. But he found it in the most unusual of places. And I would suggest that that may be the pattern for the future. When Jesus comes back, whenever he comes back, I'm convinced he's going to find faith. But he may not find faith in the place where we think faith should be found. There are many faithless churches, sad to say. Faithless churches are churches that live within the confines of their own boundaries and their own resources and their own abilities. There's no faith in that, people. For goodness sake, we've got to stretch ourselves. We've got to grow ourselves. We've got to go take ourselves into territories where we have to trust God. And God is looking for churches who are willing to do that. As he's looking for churches who are willing to do that, he's looking for individuals to do that as well. And very often Jesus finds faith, but I've got to suggest he finds it in the most unusual places. Matthew chapter 8 is amazing. Here's Jesus teaching a bunch of Jewish people whole bunch of Jewish people, and the Jews hated the Romans. But into this space comes a Roman centurion. I don't think in Jewish culture you could have anybody probably more despised than that other than a leper. And the centurion walks into the presence of Jesus and all of these other people, and Jesus sees him, and so do the people. And they're probably saying to the centurion, what are you doing here? This is us Jewish people. We're hanging around with Jesus. We're listening to him. What do you want? You're a Roman and you're a centurion. You're a foreigner in our country. You're keeping us hostages in our own land. We hate you. Get out of here. But Jesus sees this. Isn't it beautiful? And he says to the Roman centurion, I see you want something. What do you want? And the Roman centurion went on to the dumb silence of the Jewish people, I'm sure, to speak about his servant. He said, Jesus, I've got a servant, great guy. He's a good man. Unfortunately, he's sick, nigh unto death. And Jesus, I need you to pray for him. Would you pray and heal my servant? And so Jesus says, oh, what a great request. I'm going to come to your house. Let me come to your house right now. I'll leave this meeting. I'll come to your house and I'm going to heal your servant. And the centurion smiles. He says, Jesus, don't need to do that. You're busy, man. All you need to do, Jesus, is just say the word, and I know that my servant is going to be healed. Jesus is flabbergasted. He's totally shocked. And he says to the people, you see this? Faith coming from a source where there should be no faith. Faith is evident in this man's life that should be evident in your lives. We should be embarrassed by the fact that faith is being found somewhere where faith should never be found in a Roman centurion and all the people are looking at the roman centurion and saying maybe we judged him too harshly maybe we should be in fact more like him and then he says to jesus jesus you don't need to come to my house you just say the word and my man will be healed and jesus smiled he said your servant is healed we read the roman centurion went home and he went back to his house sure as nuts there's a servant up serving, doing what he's meant to be doing. And he inquires of the time at which the servant was healed. And it was the exact time that Jesus prayed the prayer to heal him. Jesus will find faith on the earth. He will find it in some strange places. Maybe some outbacks somewhere 
maybe some place in the back end, maybe some slum somewhere, maybe some high-rise building somewhere, maybe some widow somewhere, maybe some businessman somewhere, maybe some missionary stuck out in the back of beyond. Jesus will find faith. He may not find it in the ivory towers of a church. I hope he does, but if he doesn't, it doesn't matter because he'll find it. But the truth is he's probably going to find it in some of the most unusual places. I hope that maybe he could find it with you. Maybe you may be not considering yourself to be an unusual place. Well, it doesn't matter if you are or you're not. I really hope and pray that should Jesus come and looking for faith, he'll find it in you and in me. Think about that. You're going to have a good day. Bye-bye, people.